Hey guys, I'm Andre, a certified translator and a real estate concierge. Today we're talking about real estate and relocation. I have a company, I have been relocating people to Belarus. It's an unusual direction of migration, but it's trendy. Over the last three years, I have been quite successful, meaning we don't have any single rejection in the last 50 or something cases. And some of my clients are quite regularly meeting up in a place specified in the video description uh, on Sunday meetings of the expats. So basically my client history can be verified and these are not prepaid actors. These are guys who succeeded, they have their solution on hand and many of them will be actually happy to share the experience with you if you were to show up there. So I'm announcing the next meeting down below and you're most welcome to show up even if you're a casual visitor and not an expat yet. Before we get started, guys, thank you very much for your financial support. I got your fivers, tenors, some generous people donated $50, and uh, you may notice very soon that we have some new machinery, better angles, better views, better everything. And hopefully the sound is also okay. Not sure about the drone pictures, but in March I'll try to hook up with the navigation authority, which will uh, give me the permission to fly and today we'll be enjoying the old panoramas of the uh, central city of Minsk which right now would be very very difficult to take. Uh, we're shopping for village houses of course roughly ten thousand dollars roughly one hour away from Minsk normally southwest in my area in Stolpsy basically the very few guys too essentially who decided to upgrade sold their houses on the spot so if we weren't certain how popular that's going to be in 2021, right now in 24, I would tell you that uh, it's working. And it's really a nice, effective and budget ticket into the residency of Belarus, providing, of course, later you will upgrade to something more, more serious. We're shopping for a $100,000 Stalin flat. For this amount of money, you can get, basically I'll tell you later what you can get for that. Something unpretentious but very central, and it's an interesting way to invest a hundred thousand, then maybe renovate with another twenty, thirty, and use it when you're here or rent it out when you're not here. We'll discuss that a little bit later down the video. And for my own business project, I'm looking for uh, not so little a land lot in my own area as well that will be a little bit better connected than the place that I currently have in the forest for tourist purposes. It will be more farm oriented and the key word is farm and how it's going to work we'll probably won't discuss even in the next video. We'll see how the things are going and we'll also talk about Vitebsk real estate. It so happens that a friend of mine has just sold a flat which is roughly 50 square meters large. I'll, I'll put the spec specifications and the uh, video clip uh, down, down the video here so that you could see what money can buy you what in the city of Vitebsk, which is 270 kilometers north from here, northeast. Let's get started. Our first round of views has eight properties which are grouped around the same area of the city. Unlike my Austrian client, the current guy has the current buyer is American, by the way. He has some cash on hand. He wants to put it central to see some people, to hear some people, like not the dead silence kind of concept, but something more, more like online and uh, online in many senses. That necessitates the location as uh, train station square or railway station square near Minsk Hotel, Crown Plaza. If you were around Minsk, basically you'll see the air clip, drone clip right now. Most of the properties are second to the fourth floor. Tomorrow we'll see a couple of places located a bit higher. Many of them are per night rentals and seeing how shabby they are and what kind of pricing is demanded per night. I'm uh, myself a little bit surprised. 
because because that's that seems to be a working business and the agent is not always uh, able to plan us in into the calendar because the place has some tenants staying in there so the place is not available for review every now and then So guys, the view was quite interesting. The place rents out for 120 rubles a night, which is, which is, which makes me think I should do rentals. And uh, we'll see the competitors. This is potentially option C. We'll see what else is there, and we'll see how bad the technical issues may be. Stay in touch. Previously we covered Stalin uh, era apartment shopping. Stalin era flats are noted for their architectural, architectural tricks, cute facades, uh, rarely courtyard views, courtyard uh, sides of the houses. And normally they have aged infrastructure, so there are a lot of issues that one has to be looking into and looking for to see if that's a good deal or a bit of a headache in the near future. It could be both, by the way. So the um, Stalin apartment flats uh, still make a valuable asset, and many of you may be arguing down below, as always, that, oh, who buys that crap? Who is going to live in those ancient places? They have their market. They have their pretty solid pricing. And around the uh, circle of eight, with their, like, 90, 95,000 plus price tags, they're holding pretty seriously and they're still selling. Two months, six months after they posted the ad first, people realized that these things are selling not immediately and they're still realizing there is a market for them and in the coming March and April we'll see if uh, they are going to go. But I think we will have a bargain a little bit sooner than that. I didn't film my favorite candidate out of this uh, range of pictures or videos, but it's a pretty, pretty high sitting fellow, fourth floor apartments, about 60 meters, and a pretty uh, massive balcony, which is a kind of cute thing to sit down there with some uh, smoke, uh, legal, of course, and enjoy the courtyard view with the singing birds and maybe uh, some, some people down below. The fourth floor isn't super high, so walking up there without lift is no big problem. And personally, if I were to spend $100,000 this way, I'd probably go for one of those courtyard views with balcony and everything in a renovated building. Another American guy is in town. He has his cash. We have our village concept cracking on. We are looking for a long-term contract uh, for an apartment up to 12 months long because the residency can be that long. 
and we're looking for a nice village house which we will be buying in my area for the service of for the for the use of service for the use of distance because he is a countryside kind of guy and maybe the ten thousand dollar house will become a 50 60 whatever thousand dollar little mansion a green escape from civilization and everything for his uh, internet work and of course there'll be internet cable and uh, maybe if some, some something doesn't work out I'll be buying that house myself for my farming project but that's a, a long-term thing not even for the next year probably but it's still there as long as I have enough batteries and enthusiasm and uh, working capital this may work out here is how our candidate looks like My friend has been selling his uh, Vitebsk apartment for a while and the Russians tend to turned up and bought it, 46,000. And uh, basically worked just, just as always. Uh, they kindly allowed two, two weeks to move the stuff away from the place. They're not living in town, they have some relatives, but they do not wish the relatives to be aware of their bargain because the relatives will be asking to kindly rent it out to them, maybe free of charge, so it's a little secret in the family. Uh, they'll be bringing ruble cash for the deal, if you understand what I'm talking about, and the deal will be through a bank with secure and official ruble payments uh, fixed. And it's a one-day thing. The ownership is clinched within one day, and uh, basically the... Russian guys are looking for some happy, stable retirement away from their not-so-stable motherland. We'll see how stable it gets in April. Well, guys, this is a perfect example of where a real estate concierge may come in. Since I came here to see my friend as a basically friendly driver, give him some hand with the money as well. I didn't arrange anything because it's not my deal, it's not my game. The agency just uh, failed everything, let's put it mildly. It's Monday morning, so the registrar just collected the personal data of the people. There was no any vibe of forwarding of the pictures, scans of the stuff. So she's tediously filling in the papers and the guys went to the bank. I won't be naming you the bank, which is facilitating this safe deal, counting money and handing over receipts to make it, uh, make it legal, basically. The transaction is in rubles, of course, but the seller, as is the tradition, walks away with dollars. But... The bank says, where is the paper from the cadaster agency? And the registrar is still working on that. So everybody cheerfully went back to the bank. And this is in Vitebsk. This is early summer in Vitebsk, if I may allow a little joke. And this is where a real estate concierge could be really handy. All I have to do now is relax, 
observe the historic sites, remembering my old trade at Tour Guide. And uh, there's soon World Tour Guide Day, by the way. And hope while they finish their bureaucracy, collect the handover act, and march to the bloody bank to actually count the money. And besides, the agent has failed the homework part to get the envelopes to uh, wrap up the rubles. So I had to go to the post office and do that as well while they're struggling. That's about it. Last but not least, I've spotted a couple of land lots, 0.25 hectare each for my little farming thing. And they're sitting not far from a collective farm, which may or may not be a wrinkle about the quality of life out there. But this will require further examination and analysis, maybe water on top of other things. Water quality, it's next to the highway. And I'm pretty sure that with some proper investments and proper thinking, long-term thinking, this place may become a nice, nicely gentrified as the term in London is, uh, area with its own agricultural merchandise produce and a few other things, some services with high added value to basically make it look more charming than the train station area of Minsk, well, still with some good people uh, hanging about. Let's have a look at this place, the land lot and the property, and uh, you might basically generously share your feedback down below. I'll, as, as usual, I'll thank you for any likes, for any dislikes, for any feedback down below, any questions, unless they are a subject of a paid consultancy, because many of them are. Put them down below, and thank you for watching. The clip about the village thing is now following. I thank you for your attention and wish you luck and see you soon sometime next time. Cheers! So guys, here we are two land lots, one next to the other. The house back there, the bluish thing, is completely done, they tell me, and uh, both are on sale. Next door land lots, sitting by the international highway. Should we go for it or should we not go for it? What kind of business project or a business headache can come out of that little thing? What do you think? The idea is to Basically, I'll share the idea later, but for now, it's just getting uh, more land, straightening the logistics, and understanding how that's gonna work long term based on what exists on the land. The old lady next door just told me that there is a flood land over here at the corner of the land plot by the road. Doesn't seem critical in the spring season, it may be a bit of a, bit of a problem. But that's just something to keep in mind, otherwise the place looks good. Let's see if they're going to sell it before I buy it.